That is so cool. This is just the offset of those two waves. Very interesting. You know when you watch one of those science fiction movies and you see something in the background and it's this screen with a bunch of dials next to it and there's cool shapes moving around on this screen? Well, that device is called an oscilloscope and those figures are called Lejaju figures. And today, we're going to be making some. Tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So, a Lejaju figure is a mathematical figure that is made when you plot two different frequencies on the x and y axis. You have one frequency being plotted on the x axis, and you have one frequency being plotted on the y axis. And the place where they intersect is a dot that the oscilloscope plots on the screen, and it gives a little trace. And so you get this really cool looking figure that you can widely change by varying the phase angle of the the different waves in the oscilloscope and the frequency at which they are being oscillated. And there's some pretty cool mathematical things that come in play when this happens, such as the ratio between the two frequencies and the figure that they produce. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. So for this project, you're going to need an oscilloscope and a function generator. And you're also going to need a clear space to work with. So you got to clear out some of the junk that is covering your oscilloscope. Just like solder, electrical tape, and helping hands. Then you're going to need to fire up your oscilloscope and your function generator. So first of all, turn on both of your pieces of equipment, such as the function generator and the oscilloscope. And now you're going to have to move some of the probes around in order to connect them up. So on my oscilloscope, I have these two different connection points or probes. And as you can see, Something's not showing up and there's a flyer annoying me right now. Just hold up a second All right, it seems that I have gotten this thing to work and We now have a square wave on the screen from the test signal of the oscilloscope I just forgot to have the trigger activated So now what we can do is we can put the scope into XY mode So XY mode is actually not too hard you press the XY button and then you switch to both channels and then you adjust both of these so they're relatively the same one there we go and now all you have to do is really connect them up and then you can do some fine tuning afterwards I almost forgot first of all you need to set up your function generator and so you can switch to channel 2 you can see that these are both frequencies of 15 kilohertz and now if we check on the amplitude we can see on channel 1 the amplitude is 5 volts and the channel 2 amplitude will be 5 volts. And so when we hook both of these connectors up to our oscilloscope, we should see uh, an approximate circle being produced on the screen. And we'll have to adjust the voltages as such to get that circle. Alright, now to connecting the probes. So we want to connect the tip of each oscilloscope probe to the tip to the red wire. You want to connect the black to the black wire. And as you can see, we already have a raster on the screen, so that is obviously the x-axis. And now if we connect the second probe, the second oscilloscope probe, wow, we see a circle or a line. And so now we can adjust the voltage on here and scoot this away. We can scoot it around. And as you can see, we have a line across the screen. Now I said this would make a circle, and I wasn't exactly lying with that. So what you're going to need to do up here is change the phase angle of your frequency. You can do that by pressing set, uh, press set again so it's down here, new page down until you see the offset, nope, until you see the phase. You want to set the phase to approximately 90 degrees. As you can see with a phase of 90 degrees, it is a perfect circle, but as I shift the phase, it changes. So right now, I'm constantly changing the phase. You can see that the circle is rotating. At 0 degrees, it is a straight line. At 30 degrees, it is a part circle, one third away open. At 60 degrees, it's one third of the way open there too. 90 degrees, it's fully open. And then at 180 degrees, it is closed again. That is because of the phase shift between the waves. 
So now, let's see what happens when we change around some of the frequency values. It should look pretty cool. So as you can see, it's at 15 kilohertz right now, but as soon as I switch, something's wonky is gonna happen. Whoa, what is that? It seems that the entire thing has just changed. And as I change frequencies, the shape changes like that too. As you can see, at 30 kilohertz, there's an infinity sign here. And there's an infinity sign because the uh, frequencies are exactly twice each other. The ratio is 1 to 2. And so we can see this by changing the frequency down to 10 kilohertz. And we see that the, the ratio of 1 to 3 creates a shape that looks like this. And so let's change this all the way down to 1 kilohertz. So that is a ratio of 1 to 1. It's not a perfect circle, but I messed with some things that made it not so. I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Either way, if I increase the frequency to 1 to 2, looks like that. 1 to 3 looks like that. It's an S. 1 to 4 looks like that. It looks like a parabola. But the interesting thing is that if you go and fine tune the tuning of it, you can cause it to spin. And see how I can slow down the spinning or reverse it? It looks like that entire device is spinning like that. And if it spins fast enough, you can see that it becomes something different. Other than that spinning thing. And so I can, let's take a look at a 1 to 5 ratio, a 1 to 6 ratio, 1 to 7 ratio, 1 to 8. Now let's go and do the opposite on a different channel. So as you can see, 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4. You can see that it was spinning in the this axis at first. So now if I set it to spin at this different axis, you can see that it spins that way. It spins this way, and that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? As you can see, it is 3 kilohertz exactly on both channels, and the, the picture is perfectly stated there. And if I de decrease this down to 3,000... And one hertz spins. If I set it to 3,002 hertz, it spins faster. If I set it to 3,000.5 hertz, you can see it spins extremely slow, but it still spins. And you can fine tune it so it doesn't spin anymore. You can move it around and then stop it. Or I can line it up and make a perfect looking sine wave. There we go. I align the frequencies so perfectly that it's 2,999 hertz, 2,999.99 hertz, and you can see it's not moving at all, it's perfectly lined up, but as soon as I move the frequency off one more to three kilohertz, it slowly starts to part and move away. So I'll move into different ratios by changing it on a smaller level in the tens place. I mean hundreds, please. Here we go. This is two, 2,000 hertz, 2,100 hertz, 2,200 hertz, 2,300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. 2,600, no, 2,070, 2,080, 2,090, 2,100. Looks pretty cool. 2,200. 2,300, 2,400, 2,500, 2,600, 2,700, 2,800, 2,009, 3,000. So as you can see, these Leishaju figures look very cool on this oscilloscope screen as provided by this dual channel signal generator and frequency counter. Wow, this is awesome. We saw this figure, and this figure is produced by two sine waves. But what would happen to this figure if we made it be produced by a sine wave and a square wave? What would happen? Let's see. We shall click shift, set, and we shall change the wave to a square wave. And whoa, what happened there? Looks pretty crazy. At a triangle wave, the whole thing looks like teeth rotating around in circles. Now what happens if we set the other channel to a triangle wave too, so we have two separate triangle waves? Well, let's see. That's two square waves. Two triangle waves, the entire formation is made of triangles. 
That is interesting. A sawtooth wave, it just looks like a sawtooth wave being portrayed on the screen. So in a triangle wave, that looks very cool. Now let's try and adjust the frequencies of this triangle wave. Whoa, that looks cool. It's basically like the original device, but with triangle waves. Because all of the different ratios can be created by these triangle waves, and that's awesome. Let's go back to the first channel. At an exactly 1 to 1 ratio, it's a square. That's cool. At a 1 to 2 ratio, it's whatever that is, a V. 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6. This so looks like that. If we get into the smaller changes, we can get really cool looking checkerboard patterns like this. Okay, that is super cool looking. Look at that. It's like they're just crossing. It's like two fences crossing each other. Wow. Let's go back to the square and see what it can look like with that. Whoa. That looks pretty cool. Look at that. That is trippy. The square is just like moving around. Very interesting. So in a normal graph, you have a sine wave and the x and y coordinates are determined by the sine function. And that makes sense because you have a given amount of x coordinates and those given amount of x coordinates are determined by the sine function. Inside the graph that we're creating on this oscilloscope, the x coordinates are actually created by the sine function and, and only the x coordinates given the time constraint. So this is similar to polar coordinates because in here you have a function of x and y in this graph and in here you have a function of time and x and then time and y. And so you have the two different functions and the two different things and the time and the functions are determined by this. So if you have two of the same sine functions to make a circle, then you would have the time function of x be determined by the time and the time function of y. And because these would both be in the same phase, then they would both be moving back and forth in the same phase. And the line would change like that. So as we saw, there was a line going diagonally when they were both in the same phase. And that's because both sine functions were right here. And so the dot they would plot would be right there. And then as time went on, the sine functions would slowly move down here and slowly switch sides. And so the dot would slowly move around on that line. Now, when each function is 90 degrees out of phase, it will generate a circle. And it will generate a circle because at one point, the x is right here and the y is right here. And then the x will change to right here. And so they'll both be right here and then it'll be right here and right here and right here. And as you can see, when they're 90 degrees out of phase, it'll move in such a way to create a circle. And when you start adjusting the different frequencies or different periods of the sine functions, and then that's where you get all the different crazy shapes and they look cool like that. And there's a lot of mathematical analysis that goes behind all these different figures. And you can look those up on the Wikipedia article. It's some pretty complicated math terms, a little bit behind my math class of calculus BC. You have to move into uh, more difficult calculus classes to really understand Le Jaju figures, which I haven't done yet. But that is how you can create a pretty cool looking electronics lab where you have an oscilloscope with a moving figure on it. And you can do that using this signal generator and an oscilloscope. I'll put links to both of these in the description for Amazon. You probably won't be able to find this oscilloscope because this is given to me by a friend and this is extremely old and you probably won't be able to find this one. But this is brand new and you can find this on Amazon for about 50 bucks. There you go. Now I hope you liked this video about learning about those pretty cool little figures on the oscilloscope screen called Lejaju figures. Hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.